So it's time to spend some time dimensioning this wood, getting a straight line on it, getting the parallel rip cut, and then some of the cross cuts so that we can get the, the joinery going, put everything together, and then really start moving on the project. Now the uh, poplar here is going to be used partly for that internal frame, the structural support for the vanity itself, uh, the parts that are hidden. There will be a little bit of mahogany on that as well because the outside portions will be visible uh, when it's all glued up and put together. Now the boards here, I've stacked them, rearranged them a bunch of times, and now I've got them in a way I think I really like them. Uh, what this is here is the center set of boards is going to form the center box, that part that's going to be down the sort of the stem of the T is going to be down the middle here. Uh, this board down here is actually one that I'm going to be resawing in order to create the panels for the undersides of the T on both sides and possibly the bottom will decide if we want to bother doing that or not creating sort of a, a dust partition. This one is going to become the backsplash that's going to be on top of the vanity up on the back but I'm really thinking now this one here would work just well enough for the vent for the backsplash and this one here is the appropriate size for that top portion so we'll swap these two and as you can tell it'll probably change a hundred times between now and glue up time so let's get to it now I need to put a straight line edge on these boards all the boards and then we can run it through the table saw to get the other parallel edge on here so that we can do the panel glue ups and basically all the other work now I don't happen to have a power jointer and I'm actually correcting that in about a month but I haven't had one for a couple of years and the way that I tend to put the do the edge jointing is I've always used a guide rail. Now I did do this in my TS-75 video where I described the process but you'll be able to see it here. Uh, I'm not going to go through it in real time, you'll see it in high speed mode. But effectively you're just going to want to put this over the edge of the bench, take the guide rail and place it where you want to put that edge. Now what's nice is as just an example, if I were to put this edge flush to the guide rail strip and this edge flush to the guide rail strip, there would actually be there's about three sixteenths, almost a quarter inch here in the middle. So if I wanted to flatten that out and actually keep those edges there, I would have to run this through multiple passes through that jointer. This is just infinitely easier to just slap this down and take the, take the saw. Now, if you don't like the sawn cut, now I happen to have the combination blade because I do not have a rip blade yet. If you had the rip blade, it actually is supposed to come out cleaner for that. But if not, you can always take a hand plane, give it one swipe to make it a nice clean edge for doing a glue up. Or if you had a powered jointer, then you could do a very light pass just to clean up any machine marks that might be there. Now, one thing I also alluded to in the TS-75 video, let me put this one here on the floor, because I have a better one that shows this problem. That you might be able to see it a little bit better, but the grain, the rip, sort of ribbon saw is going this direction here. So it's actually going at probably around a 20 degree angle to the actual edges that are currently there. So if you pass this on a jointer, you're never going to get it parallel to that edge. That's where the guide rail comes in very nicely, is that you could, if you needed it to and you had no choice, you could put this rail right here so that it is parallel to those cuts. Now of course you're, you're getting a lot of waste, but this is great that you can actually make corrections. Now this is a huge correction. Usually you have just a small correction, but it's nice that you can do that because it's actually very difficult to do that on a powered jointer. some of the extra boards into some narrower slices so that I can use it to create sort of the wireframe structure we talked about underneath this table. Now I uh, sketched up a detailed plan that is uh, in a format that's only readable by me, apparently only at the time when I wrote this. So I'll decode it as I go, but for the most part, just kidding aside, for the most part, I'm just going to take the measurements off of here. You're going to do one part at a time and as you go along you'll find the other parts. So uh, the, the one trick is that some of the members I'm going to make out of poplar and some of the members I'm going to make out of mahogany. The mahogany is only going to be places where it's potential that you're going to be able to see it. Poof! And just like that, this board appeared in front of us. Now, this board was one that I picked up. Not sure what happened to it, but uh, it decided it wanted to be able to, you know, reach around a corner and poke somebody on the back of the shoulder. So this one here is not going to be useful for anything like long rails. I mean, it could be if you had enough support for it. In fact, it can be very useful as a, as a shelf in a bookcase if you were to put the bow up. But in this case here, I don't have anything like that. Not going to be any books inside the vanity. So what I'm going to use it for is I'm going to cross cut uh, to shorter pieces 
and we're going to use these for some of the shorter verticals and some of the shorter horizontal pieces where the bow basically will be almost eliminated but just by its dimensions. So we got all the parts to size as we saw earlier, and I just went through and planed off all the machine marks. Now it's basically a bucket of machine marks. I find that it's a lot easier to do by just hitting it with a uh, smoother plane. Uh, it goes very, very quickly. Usually takes one, maybe two swipes at most. Uh, there was one of them that had sort of a little dip, so that was nice to get that kind of flattened out. Uh, the edges become so much crisper and cleaner, so when we go to do the joinery with the dominoes, these are going to just match up beautifully. Now one thing that was weird about this mahogany, now I've dealt with a lot of different varieties of mahogany, Sipo and Sapili, both uh, for the majority of my projects. This is, they called it genuine mahogany. I've never worked with this one before, but it was really weird that it was pulling off, this is what was coming off on my, on my table saw when I was doing the edge cuts. So it was very unusual and it was sort of doing the same thing when I was using the TS-75 to do the edge cuts. So I'm not really sure what to make of it. It's almost like it's very fibrous. So uh, there were a lot of really fuzzy edges on here. So that was nice to actually hit it with a hand plane and that took those right off and now we're all back down nice crisp edges. So now we're going to hit it with the domino and we're going to build the structure. So at this point we're getting to the domino joinery and this is for the front part of the top box. and The rest of it just flows together. But what I wanted to go over to show you is something that there's going to be a few things that are different here with the way I'm putting the dominoes together. Now I have a older pin style model and what I use are these little spacers when I'm doing projects like this. What this spacer does is it'll sit on the pin so it locks itself on with a magnet and it's centered and now when you bump up the piece of stock to the edge of it, like so, it's going to automatically center the mortise. Now this one here is for two inch stock and this is a one and a half piece stock so if I put the one and a half inch spacer on instead now you'll see that it actually would be centered on there. So it works out very very quickly that you don't need to make any centering marks or, or set up any, any gauges or anything like that. You just snap this on and away you go. And of course just change it for the reference surface that you're using on which pin. Now. The reason I say there's a couple things that are going to be different here is these two areas here delineate where the sink is going to be. Now I'm going to have drawer runners, let's just pretend this is a drawer runner, and the drawer runner is going to be laying flat here. This outside edge of the drawer runner is going to match the outside surface of this piece here that does a separation. So of course it's going to stick out more towards the inside, which is fine because that's going to be where we run the drawer. So that's going to be just perfect. Now the reason why I say there's going to be some differences is in a way, if you take a look at this, I'm going to have a domino going straight down here, and I'm also going to have one coming in this way. If I center it on this block here, and then I do a full plunge depth of the mortise for this one, of course it's basically going to clip off that mortise and it's, it clip off that domino, and there's only going to be a very little bit of it going in. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually put the domino for this, Instead of putting it dead in the center, I'm going to offset it to move it more towards the front. That's going to give me a little bit more room. And then when I do this one here, I'm going to drop it lower so it's going to be very low on this board. And then it's going to be a little, it's not going to go quite as far in. So between the two, I'm going to, it, there's still going to be an intersection, but the intersection is going to be much further away. So this is just a, a way of dealing with that. Now for doing the placement of this mortise, what I can do is even though this is inch and a half stock, I can use the different size spacers. So this shows a piece of that inch and a half stock and using the one and three quarter inch spacer you can see how offset the domino mortise became. If I use the two inch spacer you can see how the offset moves it even further to the opposite corner. So this is useful for me to be able to do these offsets without actually having to mark down pencil lines again. So just Use a reference block to make sure that one of your sizes isn't going to blow out the side and you're ready to go. So none of these are going to be centered. They're all going to be kind of offset a little bit to give as much wood in between as possible. And uh, let's just go to it. Now this might be worth explaining. What I did here is I need this side to be at basically, uh, well, 11 and 3 quarter inches from the edge, end of this board. So I struck a line and that's where this board needs to go. Now how am I going to do this plunge in the middle of nowhere? 
And that's where you have to remember that the bottom of this plate, and this is included on the new one, the bottom of this plate is 10 millimeters to the center of the mortise. So if I were to place this directly on that line, I mean, I'm going to use something to square it up, but if I place it directly on that line, 10 millimeters up is going to be the center of the mortise. So if I know that this edge here is supposed to be flush with that, I know I just have to go 10 millimeters down from the top. So all I would need to do is set this, uh, you know, you can set this to 10 millimeters down, this absolute gauge that's here, but it's a little hard to get that directly. So since this convenient gauge, convenience gauge shows you the thickness of material, you know, it's always going to be double what's on this reading up here, you can just set this bottom one to 20. This one will automatically be set to 10, and then you'll get it to the right distance, even though this is, I think, 21 and a half millimeters thick. It won't be dead center, but it will get you to your exact flush to that line. So as you just saw, I just finished drum sanding these panels to get them to a consistent thickness. It was a lot easier than running it through a planer. With thin stock like this, a planer will tend to push it down and just give you a thinner board that still has a cup. What I want to do is this is part of the top of the T, and uh, this would be the inside surface. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a dado or groove all the way across this so that I can put the panel in here and in here. Now I'm not going to worry about having put a groove there for nothing. It's, it's fine. So there'll be one here. This is the back portion. There'll be one along the bottom here as well to receive it in the back. And then, of course, the stretchers that go to the back. Because I'm going to use the uh, KM1 from Bridge City Toolworks. It's already calibrated to this dado. I've set it to being, this is marking that there's a quarter inch dado. But basically, we're going to use this to set a groove that's going to be exactly the thickness of this board. So we'll just put this Kerf Maker on the board. Easier with uh, something holding the board. Squeeze it lock it down, now it's set. So I have the KM1 in position. I have this set up to do the first cut, which is going to be the distance I want from the bottom of the vanity. And then what this is going to do is it's going to tell me how much to nudge over the fence in order to make a perfectly sized data. So let's uh, go ahead and run through these. Now we adjust the fence per the KM1. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to slide this over, flip this, now scoot this back until it bumps. Mm -hmm. 
no measuring.